So the question that we see here is quite a challenging back titration calculation. And so with these types of questions, what I find really, really helpful is to always draw a diagram. So if we have a look at this question, it says a sample of magnesium oxide was found to be contaminated with sodium chloride. Magnesium oxide is not very soluble in water, but can be dissolved in excess standardized HCl. In order to determine the purity of magnesium oxide, 3.86 grams of the sample was dissolved in 500 mils of HCl and then 25 mils of that was titrated against 0.213 moles of sodium hydroxide um, and the average titration volume was found to be 10.4 mils. And the question wants us to essentially calculate the percentage of magnesium oxide in that original sample. So like I just said, when you get back titration calculations, um, there's lots and lots of information. So it's really, really important for us to draw a diagram just so we have an idea of what's going on. So if we have a look at this question, we have a sample of magnesium oxide and that's contaminated with sodium chloride. So let's just draw our sample here, okay, in this sort of circle. And that's our sample, all right? And we've got 3.86 grams of that, right, as sort of suggested here. And that's dissolved in 500 mils of 0.14 mole per liter HCl, okay? So this is dissolved in 0.143 moles of HCl, and there's 500 mils of that, right? So we've put our sample here, okay, and we've dissolved it up to 500 mils, all right? And then we take 25 mils of that solution, and then we titrate that against 0.231 mole per liter sodium hydroxide. So if I draw that titration here, we've got 0.231 mole per litre sodium hydroxide, okay, and we needed 10.4 mils of this, okay, and in the conical flask, we took 25 mils of that and placed it there, okay, okay, so before we even jump into the calculation, um, it's really important for us to understand what's actually going on, so to summarise all the information that's been given to us so far, we've got a sample here, right, and that sample contains magnesium oxide, but it's also got a bit of sodium chloride. What we're interested in, though, is that magnesium oxide, right? And we know that, okay, if we add magnesium oxide to hydrochloric acid, that's going to react with some of that hydrochloric acid, okay? The more magnesium oxide we have, the more hydrochloric acid it's going to react with. But it's not going to react with all of it, right? Because we see we've got 500 mils, which is a lot. So that 500 mils, there's going to still be some amount of hydrochloric acid remaining. And we take some of that hydrochloric acid remaining and we titrate that against sodium hydroxide to see how much that is. Now, why is that useful? Well, it's useful because if we can calculate how much hydrochloric acid was in here, which we can find through seeing how much sodium hydroxide was reacted, then back calculate and say, okay, if we know how much hydrochloric acid was in here, okay, and then we know how much hydrochloric acid we started with, well, then the difference must have been used to react with magnesium oxide. And if we can calculate how much magnesium oxide we have, then we can calculate then the percentage composition in that original sample. All right, so let's just write some equations to summarize this. All right, so when we take the sample and we react it here, that magnesium oxide is going to react with the HCl present to form magnesium chloride and H2O. Okay, and so we're going to have to balance that and that's going to be a 2 there. Okay. And then in here, we've got that excess HCl that we react with the sodium hydroxide to give us H2O plus NaCl, like so, okay? So with all back titration questions, generally, you start off with the titration calculation and then you back calculate, which is why it's called a back titration. So let's start off with this first equation here. So HCl reacting with NaOH to give us H2O plus NaCl, right? And whenever we do calculation questions, I always like to write what we know underneath. So what do we know underneath? Well, we know that the HCl, we had 25 mils of that. And the sodium hydroxide, we had 0.231 moles per liter of that. And we required 10.40 moles per liter. Okay. So the main thing that we want to find here is the concentration. Okay. So I'll just move this down so that we can visualize what we have. Right. So we've got two volumes. We've got a concentration here, so obviously we want to find the concentration of HCl, all right? So how do we do that? It's quite straightforward. Zero point two three one moles per liter times zero point zero one zero four. 
Right, and that should so get us. First find the number zero, of moles of sodium zero, zero, hydroxide two, that we four, have. Zero, two, okay, four. and that's going to be zero. okay. And we know that the number of moles of sodium hydroxide should be equal to the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, right? Because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So we know that the number of moles of HCl, which I'm just going to write as excess, okay? So I'm going to say the number of moles of HCl excess. And the reason why I said the number of moles of HCl excess is because if we have a look at our diagram, right, we know that our sample was reacted with HCl and we titrated the excess HCl, okay? That's just to distinguish it from our original HCl because you'll see in a sec that it's actually different. So the number of moles of HCl in excess is going to be the same, right? 0 0.0024024, okay? And then the final step for this bit is to then calculate the concentration of HCl, okay? So the concentration of this HCl that was in excess from that reaction is going to be 0 0.0024024 divided by volume, which is 0 0.025, right? Because we had 25 mil volume here that we titrated, okay? It's not the original 500 mils, right? Because remember, we only took 25 mils of that to do the titration, okay? And if we plug it into that calculator, we should get 0 0.096096 moles per liter, okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that in the solution here that we titrated, this HCl that we titrated, that concentration of the HCl was 0 0.096096 moles per liter, right? Because we needed this much amount of sodium hydroxide at this concentration to cancel it out, right? Now, you might ask, okay, then, why is, these, why is this number different to this number, right? Why are these two numbers different? Well, firstly, we've got to know that, notice that this number is less, all right? The HCl that we had in here had a lower concentration than the HCl here. Now, why is that the case? Or well, why does that make sense? Well, it makes sense because what's happened here is we originally started with 0 0.143 mole per liter HCl, right? But some of that reacted with the magnesium oxide, okay? So obviously the amount of HCl here is gonna decrease, right? The 500 mL stays the same, right? But the amount of HCl is gonna decrease because some of it's reacted with the magnesium oxide. And so that's why when we take that final solution after this reaction here, if we take some of that and titrate here and we find the concentration of it, it's actually gonna be less, right? Now, what can we do with this number, right? So we said that the concentration here of the HCl is 0 0.096096 mole per liter, right? That's the HCl. Now, that's also the same as the final concentration here after the reaction, right? So to find out how much HCl was actually used, we can take the original amount of HCl and then minus that off the final amount of HCl. And the difference is gonna be how much HCl was actually reacted with the magnesium oxide. So that's gonna be our next step, right? So zooming in here, we're gonna find the number of moles of HCl after the reaction, okay? And I'm gonna call it after reaction one, okay? So this is reaction one. So how much HCl was there after that reaction? The reason why is because I, I wanna differentiate that from this titration that we've done here. So let, let's call this equation two. This is for equation two, okay? So we're interested in how much HCl was after that first reaction, okay? So how do we find that? Well, we wanna take the concentration, Okay, so this was a concentration of HCl, which was 0 0.096096, and we want to times it by the volume, okay? The volume here was 0 0.5, and that will get us the number of moles of HCl that were left over. Now, you might ask, okay, why don't we just use the number of moles that were here, right? So a number of moles like this that was in excess, right? Why don't we just use that number there? Well, we've got to remember, moles tells us essentially the number of particles. Now, the number of particles of HCl here are going to be different to the number of particles of HCl here, even though they're the same concentration, right? Because we said they're the same concentration because we're just taking this bit and putting over here. It's like pouring a bit of cordial out into a cup, right? It's the same concentration, but why are there different number of moles? Well, it's because they're different volumes, right? We said the number of moles is the number of particles. So the number of particles here, even though they're the same concentration, there's less of it here. So that's why there's going to be a less number of moles compared to here. So we actually want to find essentially how many moles of HCl was in the original beaker after this reaction happened. So essentially, we want to find how much cordial was in the big jug, not in the little cup here, right? In the big jug here. Okay, so that's why we times it by 0 0.5 or 500 mils. Okay, and that should get us 0 0.048048, like so. Okay, and so there's this number of moles of HCl after the reaction. 
then the next step is to then find the number of moles before that reaction, right? Because then we said the difference is going to tell us well, how much HCl was used and then therefore that's going to tell us how much magnesium oxide was used. So the number of moles of HCl before the reaction, okay, so before reaction one is going to be the concentration before the reaction, so the original concentration times the original volume. So 0 0.143 times 0 0.5, and that's going to get us 0 0.0715, like so, okay? And so then the difference between these two reactions is going to tell us how much HCl was actually used, right? Because this calculation that we've just done has told us how much HCl was at the end of this reaction, okay, so how much HCl was left over, and this calculation here tells us how much HCl we actually started with, okay? So the difference... So the number of moles of HCl used, therefore, okay, so therefore the amount of HCl used is going to be the amount that we had before the reaction minus the amount that we had after the reaction. So 0 0.0715 minus 0 0.04808, like so. And that should get us 0 0.023452, okay? So that tells us the number of moles of HCl used, okay? So to quickly recap what we've done so far, we said, okay, we had a sample here and we're interested in the amount of magnesium oxide that's present, okay? And so we poured it into a beaker of 500 mL of HCl and this reaction occurred, right? The magnesium oxide reacted with the HCl, but there wasn't enough magnesium oxide to completely react with the HCl. There's still a little bit of HCl left over. So we took that HCl and we titrated against sodium hydroxide. And that was useful because this titration helped us find out the concentration of the HCl which was the same as the concentration of the HCl here, right, after this reaction had occurred, right? So now that we have the concentration of this HCl, which was the same as the concentration of this HCl, that'll help us find the amount of HCl that was after the reaction. We also know the amount of HCl before the reaction, right, because we just have, we have the concentration, we have the volume. So then to find out how much HCl was actually used in the reaction, it was actually quite simple. All we did was then we just minus the amount of HCl we had before the reaction with the amount of HCl we have after the reaction. So then the final step is, now that we know how much HCl was used, we can then correlate that with the amount of magnesium oxide that was present. So then to do that, MgCl2 plus H2O, rewriting this equation, just we know that it's a equation. two to one ratio. That was so the number of moles of HCl so that we use. We're just rewriting that double again, the amount of the moles of magnesium oxide that we use. Or essentially, if we have the number of moles of HCl to find the number of moles of magnesium oxide, we've got to divide it by two, right? Because it's two to one. So then, therefore, the number of moles of magnesium oxide is going to equal the number of moles of HCl divided by two, right? So we're going to take this number and divide it by two which gets us 0 0.011726, like so. And so therefore, we can, once we have the number of moles of magnesium oxide, we can then calculate the mass of magnesium oxide by times it by the molar mass. And so therefore, the mass of magnesium oxide should be, times it by the molar mass, should get us 0 0.4726, etc. Okay? And so that gets us our amount of magnesium oxide that we have in grams, and then just to wrap the question off, answering the question, the question asks us for the percentage of magnesium oxide in the sample. And so our sample was originally 3.86. And so by this calculation, we have 0 0.4726. So therefore, because I'm running out of space, I'm just going to do the calculation here. So therefore, the percentage mass of magnesium oxide is going to be this, this number here, 0 0.4726. So 0 0.4726 divided by 3.86 times by 100, which should give us 12.2%. And we'll just round that to 3SF because the lowest number of SF in this question is 3SF. So it's 12.2%. Okay, so to recap what we've sort of done, all right, because this is a very, very complex question. And if you can understand this question, you're doing quite well for yourself. So we have a sample here, which contains sodium chloride, but more importantly, it contains our magnesium oxide, okay? And so in this sample here, there's a bit of magnesium oxide in there. We don't know how much, but we know if we react the magnesium oxide with HCl, it's gonna form this reaction, okay? And so what we've done, we've taken the sample and we've reacted with HCl, but we've reacted with a lot of HCl. So there's gonna be excess HCl, 
Okay, some of the HDL is going to get used up, but there's going to be some left over. And we take whatever's left over and we titrate it. Why do we titrate it? Because we want to find the concentration of that HDL after that reaction, right? Because we said we used a bit of it, so the concentration is going to go down. Okay, we, so we first start by trying to find this HCl concentration, right? So we look at the titration and we say, okay, we use this amount of sodium hydroxide at this concentration, okay? And that gives us a number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Then that helps us find the number of moles of that HCl that was excess or that was remaining after this original reaction, okay? And once we know the number of moles, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's the same as NaOH, then we can find the concentration by dividing it by 0.025. Okay, and that gets us the concentration. And we see that this concentration is actually less than the original HCl concentration. And that makes sense because we've used up some of that HCl, right? So then what we can do to find out how much HCl was used in the reaction, we take the amount for the reaction. So we found the amount of HCl before the reaction, and then we found the amount of HCl after the reaction. And we find that by taking the concentration here, which is the same, right? Because like I said before, the analogy of cordial, of taking a big jug of cordial and I've just poured a little bit out to do the titration. So obviously the concentration in here should be the same as the concentration here. So we've got the same concentration, but there's more volume now, right? So we times it by 0 0.5 and that gets us the number of moles of HCl here after the reaction. And then we have the number of HCl, number of moles of HCl before the reaction. So the difference is going to tell us the amount of HCl used. So this number here tells us the amount of HCl used. And then finally, because we now know the number of moles of HCl used, then we can use our mole ratios to find out how much magnesium oxide was present because the number of moles of HCl used is going to equate to the amount of magnesium oxide present. And so it's a two to one ratio. So we find the number of moles of magnesium oxide that was present. Then we can convert that to mass. And once we've converted it to mass, we've just done the final calculation up here to find the percentage mass, which is just the actual mass of magnesium oxide that was present divided by the whole sample times by 100. And we get 12.2% to 3SF. So in the original sample, there was 12.2% magnesium oxide, and the rest was likely sodium chloride or some other contaminant. Okay, hope that makes sense.